So the problem is that bearing is sealed uh, or seized, fused, rusted on to this bracket right here. And so I don't care how many times I hit it or what I hit it with, it's not going to free up. All right, here we are underneath the car. And uh, here is the CV axle shaft here. Right here is where it goes into the differential transmission right here. See how it's pretty flush. We'll have to get it about like that when we uh, put it back. See it is rusted here on the outside. It's our exhaust pipes. You see blurred out there. So here is the nut. Uh, that kind of retains it in place along with the retaining clip right here has two ends that we'll need to squeeze or either just pull away from and unclip but uh, this right here that is a uh, 14 millimeter so I'm going to go ahead and lube that up a little bit or squirt some uh, PB blaster on that we'll put our wrench on that and turn that off and then we'll go for that clip there. There we go. All right, so I've got a dilemma here. Uh, I'm not able to get the axle out. Everything was going so smoothly. Here's where it uh, goes into the differential transmission right here. Um, so what I've been doing is uh, taking a pry bar, actually this guy right here. Let's see the ends flared off there, flared where I've been hitting it. I actually machined this, tapered this, and what I'm doing is setting up over here on the passenger side above the uh, pipe here. Okay, see that right there? That's the uh, that's the bearing right there, and I'm hitting that with the pipe and the bar that I just showed you, and I've been doing that for about a day. This is day two, um, so it's not working. I've tried uh, I've tried other bars, um, but uh, I know at this point that it's not going to come out. So the problem is that bearing is sealed. Uh, are seized, fused, rusted on to this bracket right here. And so I don't care how many times I hit it or what I hit it with, it's not going to free up. Uh, especially working underneath the car here, uh, it's pretty difficult to get to do that. So uh, I took this little heat shield thing off right here, it's no big deal. You know, and here was a set screw. By the way, there's a rubber piece that I took out there. I'll need to put back in if I ever get this one off and put the new one uh, in place. Um, and that rubber just keeps that screw from cracking the uh, the bearing race. You know, kind of kind of cushions it. So I want to put that back. But also, I got a carriage bolt um, and stuck in here that was. Uh, you know a couple sizes smaller uh, I didn't thread it in I just held it with one hand I pounded that with my hammer as well trying to break that bearing and uh, unseize you know the rust or whatever's keeping it in there I'm sure it's rust all right so that's uh, that's a problem um, and I don't know I really don't know what I'm gonna do at this point <clears throat> all right so there's, uh, I think there's three bolts holding this brace on bracket, and one of them's right there. One of them is above there. Now I have loosened those, uh, just broke those loose to make sure that I could. The other part of the dilemma is the other one that I have to loosen is right here. Okay, so this part of the axle is so close to it that I can't get a wrench on there. Definitely can't get a socket on there. 
and then it has a lip here you know part of the bracket that doesn't really allow you to to do much with a wrench either so that's a real problem so um, that's the update I'll get back with what I decide to do I can keep on working and see I've got more uh, more motion there that's gonna work out just fine right there I can keep doing that if I want but I think we're probably good right there so once I got all the bolts out of this brace here uh, I thought it would be easy to just drive it straight out at that point but then I found that there's a couple of studs that hold the brace uh, in place before you put your bolts in. They're mounted at the top. Or actually they're mounted, there's one right there, there's a little hole stud behind there. It may even be broke off by now. But what I tried to do was take a screwdriver on this end, open it up slightly um, to raise it away from the studs I didn't want to pull it out too much I don't want to stress uh, you know the axle here or damage the transmission by trying to pull it out or wet or you know put a wedge in there and, and push it out too much so just about what I've got here uh, I'm willing to actually you know maybe bend those off and then go back later and uh, kind of taper them up if I have to so you know, I have to get this thing out, so even if it breaks off, you know, as far as my vehicle goes, I'm not saying this is what anybody, anyone else would do. I probably would be fine with that with almost 200,000 miles on the car. Um, but uh, let me see if I can get a zoom in on that. You can see one of the holes right there. That's where one of the a stud uh, mounted on the block, you know, goes in to help you set this brace before you mount it okay so once I move that brace by tapping it you can see that it's opened up about a uh, about an eighth of an inch so we're making a little progress and that's about the same distance that I needed to pass those studs so I've removed the screwdrivers because um, I don't want to keep uh, pounding and what I'm doing is I'm hitting the brace here with a uh, bar and a ball peen hammer instead of hitting the uh, Yeah, I'm just hitting the brace directly since that is uh, unmounted now uh, So I remove those screwdrivers because I don't want to keep pounding it with uh, the screwdrivers in place I uh, don't want to stress anything up here. So uh, yeah, we should be past the stud So I'm going to try to continue uh, making some progress here and getting this out I'm just grabbing the axle. Uh, I don't have a pan. Doesn't look like any fluids come, gonna come out. Okay, at this point, got the uh, brace in place, so I'm gonna have to try to figure out how to, I'm letting this rest here on the exhaust pipe. I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna get it out over here. Alright, so I separated it here by taking that, uh, just removing this, stressing that band out. I was able to separate the uh, knuckle there. So uh, I just gotta get that through. You can see the axle. All right, it's going it's not going to be bad. Oh, 
Okay, there's a look at the mess right there. So we're gonna have to uh, knock this out. And that's not gonna be easy either. All right, so I've got the axle here. Uh, I'm outdoors, got a big flat rock here. Can of PB Blaster. Ball peen hammer, heavy ball peen hammer. Uh, trying to separate the bracket from the bearing. The bearing is right here. Here's the bracket. It's kind of hard to tell the difference. Bearing, bracket. Just uh, going around the bracket here. Got some good places I can hit right here and here. Uh, making sure that I don't hit something like this and break it off. Been hitting right there. That is a kind of hard. Uh, to get the hammer to hit but right here so uh, continuing to spray as I go along and just trying to uh, you know make equal hits um, around the bracket pretty much so uh, let's we'll set the camera up and uh, I'll show you what I'm doing Some movement here. All right, so uh, been hitting it for about 30 minutes, which is really not a long time. Could be much, much worse. And we are good to move on. Clean this bracket up. Still in pretty good shape. Um, I think these are about 70 bucks. So if you're going to sit there and beat on it for days in, you may just want to go ahead and buy a new one. I would probably. Uh, just make sure it matches up, which might be kind of hard to do. Okay, so that's how it was in the car. You see there. So we had that lip on there, I had to cut away to get a wrench on there. Once I did get it loosened, what I had to do was get the bolt out. Okay, unfortunately the bolt is very long, see here, and so this was inside here. So it, the bolt, I don't want to put it back in place really, but the, the head of the bolt was right under this right here. So no matter how I turn this, even flat like that, there's no way that it was gonna allow me to lift the bolt out, that makes sense. It's locked in place. So I had to, I had to loosen it as far as I could and get it as high as I could. At that point I cut it because I didn't want to cut it too low because once I cut the head off, uh, I was going to have to get the rest of the bolt out um, with some pliers, needle nose pliers is how I got it out. And, and once I was able to get that out, then I could actually remove the whole assembly here. But that's how long it was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a shorter one in. I've already found uh, a bolt, uh, same, same threads, and it's going to be shorter. In case I ever have to take this out again, um, it won't be as difficult. So uh, that's kind of how it's set up. I hope you kind of understand how it is. Uh, again, the bearing here was locked in. The bracket here, frozen, rusted. And so this was riding right above that bolt head. So that's what made it so difficult. So here's where the brace was mounted. We have top mounting hole here, 
bottom one here and that difficult one was right here oil pan right below it which didn't make it any easier uh, those studs that were on it you can see that they broke off one was right here completely sheared off uh, this is aluminum the other one was right here right across from it it sheared off as well now there are holes there I may be able to put a little maybe like a nail that will fit in there that will also fit in my brace and that may work otherwise I'm just going to go ahead and just mount it back with three mounting bolts uh, this is uh, an old car my personal car so you know I don't think it's going to be a problem if I don't have anything as far as the studs here for the two studs that broke off on the block uh, I'm replacing those with some pins that I've made here from a nail I've sized them so that they go into the holes uh, or what are now holes on the block these bottom out then I can set my bracket on top of them and that is far as they will go they will not go through so they're locked in place and they will be locked in the back against the uh, the block of the engine the other one same way now it is important that I make sure they are the right size uh, then that they're not any longer than they need to be they can be shorter but not longer because I'm going to have to have this exactly flush um, against the block the mating surface okay so we're clean here we'll take some anti-seize and go around the perimeter of it I want it to just slide right in place without having to uh, do any hammering or anything like that. I think that'll be good. It does have to fit snug though. Here's the new axle. I'm going to match it up with the old one and see if it's uh, the right one. Alright, I got the new one here. Uh, just laid out here. Got this all the way in. The bearing is already all the way in the brace here. So we'll have the top bolt and then the bottom bolt and we'll have that bolt there. Okay, we'll put those in first and we'll slide this in once it's mount, once the bra brace or brackets mounted. Hopefully it'll slip right in. And if I have to take it back out to change the seal later or for whatever reason, you know, I'll be able to just pull it right out and it won't be uh, frozen in there, rusted in there again. So I've got the brace mounted. See it right there. So I just need to make a passageway with the axle. Get it in the brace. Uh, that'll support it until I can line everything up. All right, perfect, perfect. That's in. Yeah, the uh, bearing is in really nice. The dust cap is bent, but the uh, all right. So it's bottoming out here at the. Yeah, we're good. We should be good. Bottoming out at the the bearing here. 
Yeah, it's bottoming out there. So we should be good. We'll go ahead and put this uh, bolt back in that there's a rubber piece that goes in first to kind of cushion uh, against the bearing and the bolt. Spray these with some uh, PB blaster there. Got the splines to line up here and when it came through on this end it came all the way through it pulled the bearing back out so I had to go back underneath the car make sure that uh, axle was all the way into transmission got the bearing seated back in the brace and here's how much we have left over here so that's looking good Now, I had never put that uh, that bolt that goes into the brace to hold the bearing. I did not put that in place yet. Went ahead and did this part of it. So now I'm going to go ahead and set it now that we've got it in here in the hub. Okay. So this thing is bent, so this thing is a little bent, so that's why it looks weird, but got the other end in the hub now. Uh, after that, I went ahead and just tightened this right here, going into the bearing. Again, there's a rubber piece that goes in first to kind of cushion the bolt against the bearing. Uh, next, I'm going to put this retaining clip here, locking pin in place. And then there's a little heat shield I need to put in place that goes over here. All right, here's the retaining clip. Put it in the grooves. Is it in? Or is it out? Okay, so it's set up here flush against uh, the brace, and then we have to make sure that it is even down here. There we go. So it kind of snaps. All right, so here's that shield in place. I don't really know what that does. Uh, this, I was calling it a heat shield, but really it's, I guess it just kind of covers the bearing a little bit. At least on this side over here. Alright. 